Come on, Pamela. Pammy. Show us your friends. Hey, we're, we're back, guys. Oh, uh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> that's we're it? back from the future. <laughs> I don't wait. Magpie, was what I just said in? <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't worry. I'll it. Everyone, ignore what I said at the very beginning of this episode of this. <laughs> Please ignore it. But you're his father, Mystery. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's a reference to scary when you uh, when you when you know how old Mystery actually is. <laughs> He's really good. Uh, Spoiler alert! I'm Luke's father. <laughs> I'm the man under the mask. You were begging all along. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky oh Ralph was a figment of my imagination? <laughs> yes. Everything was fake. General Zod is Lois Lane? <laughs> yes. That's exactly the truth. Captain okay. Logan's doomsday's my mind is blown. Okay. <laughs> no, Vince is Doom's Vince. <laughs> Thanos is Captain Logan. <laughs> oh, okay. On Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> yes, only on Thursdays, because that makes perfect sense. Which is <laughs> Thor's <laughs> day. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, now that we've done our little bit for crazy the day. Moment. We had a little crazy moment. Yeah. We didn't uh, laugh this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, let's and get we did not spread any cowbell. <laughs> I have more cowbell. <laughs> uh, I will yeah, find him. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, okay. Serious now. Okay. <laughs> See, uh, season two of Arrow. Uh, I, I've got got some thoughts, but I'd love to hear from you you guys first because uh, oh. my expectations uh, are not that. Big. Uh, I, I've got uh, I've got an overall plan, uh, an overall idea of what I would like, but I'm not, uh, I'm not completely in uh, like completely behind it. Like if it's not this, then I'm going to throw a temper tantrum. Like some other reviewers, I feel do that on uh, YouTube. But okay, guys. What uh, the heck did that not happen? <laughs> Okay, uh, so who wants to go first? Uh, okay, you, wait. Want... Let me just get out of the way. Instead of me like telling my predictions right now, there were like the two things that pop in my mind, like that they have actually teased. Number one, the writers of the series have actually said in season two there will be two main antagonists. Oh, nice. Two main antagonists. And the other one, Stephen Amell, the actor who plays Green Arrow, has said there will be new characters that will be introduced in season two. And the characters are. Hold on. Bum bum bum. The characters are bum 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 bum. All right, I'm back. Now the two characters, or like the person playing Green Arrow, said that. There will be Amell. new characters that are introduced, and those characters are more known, like, more known and probably more popular than Green Arrow himself. Huh. Ooh. What do you know? So that leads to the possibility, to me, that maybe Batman will be introduced. Maybe Superman will be introduced. Who knows? Maybe Arrow, as the TV show, is a part of the DC Cinematic Universe. Or, the question... Questions, uh, Green Arrow is more popular. Uh, the questions, uh, not not that well known. Uh, I wouldn't mind if questions showed up. No, it can't in, be Green Lantern. But well, we actually. And you know who I think should uh, should should play question? The guy that did the voice of the question. Jeffrey in Combs. The yeah, Jeffrey Combs. I think he's a little too old now. Thinking oh, you yeah, definitely just voice him. Oh. No, what they can do, Mystery, is they just have him voice him, and they have uh, just then the physical guys for the actor. Sort of like they did with um, Mark Hamill, sort of like how they did with Mark Hamill and Birds of Prey. Yeah. Okay. 
Just making sure. But you know, one yeah, of the man. villains has to be the island villain, so that's one of the two main antagonists. Maybe, maybe not. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe we spend the entire uh, second season uh, uh, going on the on the island, just uh, showing training montages. Well, they said or it could be Dark Side. They said the two main antagonists will be in the city. Oh, oh, there we now go. that's that's interesting. There's is some that is that more like oh that yeah that's better instead of just saying oh they're gonna be two antagonists one on the island one in the city. They're both going to be in the city? Ooh, that's better. <laughs> Clock King. No. And Black Mask. Oh, Clock mm. King and Black Mask team up. <laughs> well, here's one of my theories. See, look, that woman that Fires was working for, who you said had the nice leg, I have a theory yeah. on who that We're might be. We're in agreement be. on that. <laughs> well, I have a theory on who that might be. Magpie, Oof. you might be freaked out now just by saying this after you hear my theory. I have a theory that that's Amanda Waller. What? That's my theory. Amanda Waller? Who's that? Sorry. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. One of the most popular female characters in the DC universe. It's probably because she's not a real attractive <laughs> woman like Magpie likes. Uh, sorry, I, I have not heard of who that is. <laughs> Did you see Green Lantern okay. in the movie? Yeah. Remember She's the, the black woman. Oh, okay. Named Amanda Waller. Oh, okay. She's like... I, I, it's been a while since I've seen Green Lantern, so... Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. She's but, like uh, the... She's, she um works for this place called Checkmate and all. Well, well, they kind of... um She doesn't like villains or care, superheroes that much. So, and she was the one that practically made the Suicide Squad. Well, she's in Smallville, too, Magpie. She, oh, she's the one that takes over after Lex, right? No. Okay, that's not her. Okay. She's the one that controls Checkmate. Watch, like, you have season nine, right? Yeah. Watch Did you the see ab- episode of Absolute yeah? Justice. I, I've, I'm only two episodes in and I'm bored. Okay, well, skip ahead. Watch the Abs- Absolute Justice two part or that big event on Smallville season nine. Amanda Wall is in it. Okay, I've got, I've got I've got Wikipedia open now. Yeah, okay, now now right. I yeah yeah okay now I get who it is. But yeah, that would that'd be cool. <laughs> Except she's black. <laughs> oh, Racist. that would be a definite... and this, uh, this chick is definitely white. <laughs> It's well, always a dicey move when you change gender and race. It's always kind of a dicey move. Race can be overlooked sometimes, depending on how good the actor is. But, yeah, gender is another thing. But I, I, I don't know how to talk about Could be Miss Tessmacher for all we know. Miss Tessmacher! You hit the wrong button. You hit the wrong button? Yeah. Hit the wrong button. on the laboratory. I pressed the red button. Not that one. That one. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that? Okay, that's theory number one on who might be the main villain. Uh, in the city. Theory number two. Who knows? We could have Slade come in on the city. No, uh, I, I don't want Slade to show up until season three at the earliest. Because that, uh, like, we still like, uh, like like, I've even heard this, that season one, that was Oliver's story on, like, the island. Season two for the island, that's Slade's story, talking more about Slade. So that kind of leads me to think, well, maybe Slade comes to the city. Well, that's what and I'm helps going. And helps him out and then stabs him in the back? I don't know. You don't know? I just know they said they're going to try to make, um, like, Slade story be, like, a big part. And plus, we know that Slade, the actor who's playing Slade, will be a main character, so. Yeah, I, I saw that, and I was like, yay! Well, you know what could happen? If, what? Uh, what if, for the first episode of season two, we get, uh, in Seven Island flashback, just to kind of throw the audience off for kind of, like, how we saw Oliver approaching the island. Well, we saw Oliver getting off the island. Two things we could do. 
one, we m- literally mirror that with uh, we see what happened to Deathstroke, how he got off the island eventually. And yeah. we kind of go from there. There's one idea. Another idea is kind of, I, I think I go for more, but yeah, it's, dang it, there's more mystery with the other one. I'm saying that we get kind of start with him landing on the island. And we're kind of like, what? Where are we going with this? And we we already saw fires there. We see him meeting fires, and then kind of cut to later on the island, like now on the island. I mean, we're just like, okay, what next? Or, you know, I don't know. It's along the lines, he lands, but now we see where he is on the island currently. So we're kind of curious where this is going. I guess that's an idea. My, yeah, you're my, gonna make it his journey on the island. It's a way to approach it. That's a good idea. Hey, Magpie, and Ozzy will be a main character. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh... And not Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> Seriously, man. Are you keep promoting that film on here. We're going to have to do a commentary on it. Oh, I don't, I don't have to. that movie. <sighs> Neither do I. I do. We're going to have to find it somewhere. Just so we can do a yeah. commentary on that. But anyway, another theory that I have... Roy Harper will actually become the sidekick. Or I mean, like What's get closer up? to the Arsenal or or Red Arrow or Speedy. 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 He can't become Speedy. Speedy's won't. already there. I know that's the reason. I'm that just saying. Sense. You know, it's like Green Arrow's character is not known as Green Arrow. He will go by another name, like mm. Green Arrow's red friend. Or something. <laughs> the, oh, red, the Red Hood. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they can't call him Red Hood. Literally. He'll be the I Batman can't. character I keep confusing him for. Instead of the Hood, it'll be the Red Hood. Oh, boy. Yeah. But, uh, like, wait, you're telling me Jason Todd is not the Red Hood? No, 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 he's still the Red Hood, but we can't call him Speedy yet, so Red Hood. Oh, here's a, here's a big spoiler, so... I'm, red Ar- it's like this. If they call Green Arrow the Green Archer, they can call Red, like, Speedy the Red Archer. Mm. Fair enough. Well, I'm saying Red Arrow makes sense because think about it. They're being identified by the color arrow. That's how they knew that the Dark Archer wasn't uh, Green Arrow. He identified by the arrow, and that would be an interesting way. Think about they identify him by Green Arrow and Red Arrow so they can tell which exactly. who's been there. Maybe he starts his own. Maybe he just and starts then Green off – and then Green Arrow tries to stop him. Yeah, he starts off as just Red Arrow on his own. And that's how he's being identified by the press, Red Arrow. Then, you know, Green Arrow approaches him, and eventually he'll induct him. And, you know, Green Arrow and Red Arrow are working together. And if he I breaks also, off on his own, like Nightwing, he could be called Arsenal. I mm. still want this. I want Tommy to come back in some way. I don't want him to be fully dead. He needs to come back in some way. He'll probably be Flash. <laughs> I'll be flashbacks. Maybe if he's yeah. haunted, maybe Oliver's haunted by what happened with Tommy. He's just kind of flashing back to happier times with the descent, kind of like, uh, kind of like in Spider-Man Three. We have a uh, Norman Osborn flashbacks, but kind of do them a lot better. Oliver, avenge me! Yes. Avenge me now! You slept with my girlfriend. Prove it. Uh, well, yeah, that that would might actually work. He's haunted by by Tommy and. So, uh, like eventually, that probably could could lead into what I really want is Laurel and uh, Oliver breaking up because I don't want them together for like too long. You could have bad dreams of Tommy saying, "You betrayed me, Oliver. I died for you. I I was the only one." Wake up, like this. Wake up, like this. Oliver and Oliver. Oliver and Laurel are in bed together, and then Tommy's just like. Hey Oliver, what you doing? <laughs> what you doing? And then, Why are you in bed okay. with my girl? What you doing? And what if this happened? What if this happened? Okay, Oliver, he's waking up after a night with Laurel. Like Laurel's in the bed. He wakes up and he, like Tommy's like standing right there, just kind of jarringly. Then he looks back and she's Laurel's drowning, like the sister. And then he's looking. At oh, him that's risking. crazy! Yeah. I know. And then he's like getting real close to him, and he's like saying, "You failed the city, Oliver, just like you failed me." And you're oh. you just got creepy there, and Sarah. And then... uh, yeah, yeah something I'm like that. Cross that off your list, and basically, I don't know, maybe he shoots an arrow at him, like 
he in a brief second he dresses like the dark archer and shoots an arrow at him, basically it wakes him up. Hmm. There's a scene for you. There's a nightmare for you. Yeah, that's a good I one. I have a theory for the dark archer. He is still alive. He is not dead. That's my theory. What if there was a new dark archer? Who? Cut yeah. the cousin? The I cousin mean, of it's... Merlin? No, it's not like Supergirl. I mean, what yeah. if... <laughs> What if just the, the ideal? Up younger brother? It's, I'm saying it's like if we, it's like how we have, you know, in Dark Knight, we have all these uh, imitator Batmans. What if we have imitator Dark Archers or imitator Green Arrows, like a bunch of imitators, and then uh, Speedy's one of them. Well, I mean, Red Arrow's one of them. But he's the more prominent one. Exactly. He's the more prominent. He's the one that actually shows prominence. You have a bunch of, like, just idiots going around in hoods or stuff. And then missing like crazy. Yes. And then we uh, like, like they shoot themselves in the foot. Like, oh! and then you got the red arrow who has pinpoint accuracy. Well, maybe it's not always get... arrows. Maybe it's just for the most part just guys in hoods trying to do so. Kind of like the Red Hood gang in, uh, well, Scott Snyder, again, plug. Scott Snyder's Batman Zero Year, pick it up, people. Or in uh, the end of the Red Hood animated film, we see all the Red Hood, different Red Hood imitators. Hey, yeah. look, we have a... We have a Red Hood. He can introduce Red Hood. Bingo. We can I'm have Clock King. It's not uncommon. We can have onomatopoeia. Yep, onomatopoeia. There's one, yeah. Also Cupid. I want Cupid. Hmm. Anyway, if you have we Cupid, have kind of like a new cat woman. You can have the Rainbow Archer. <laughs> well, I mean, let's do Cupid multiple, instead of... Multiple colored arrows. It's oh, like you the get the a green one, you get a red one. It's like... Whose arrows are these? You know what they should do? They should do like an organ is like a brief kind of not Justice League, but I'm saying a little group of them with different colors are trying to kind of a vigilante group, but they're really maybe they turn south. It's like a bank. I don't know, a bank robbing group. Maybe it's just a group of vigilantes with colored arrows to kind of pay tribute to the Green Arrow, but called the Rainbow the Rainbow Archer Society of the Rainbow Arrows. <laughs> that would be actually pretty good. If you really want to, well, there is another way you could do it. Uh, again, it's just I'm just spitballing ideas here. So I mean, I'm just kind of approaching this from different angles. And then, what if it was kind of a gang that was kind of for gay pride? Really? I'm Are saying really I'm gay? not trying to make fun. I believe me, I'm, the, I'm still like a rainbow song from the Muppets. I'm just saying that it's an idea that it's, it's the way people do perceive the term rainbow. And that's a lot of some people not. That open about things. Those are gonna say, "Oh, Rambo, oh, come on, that's gotta be something." God, that's gotta I'm be those are something. Some some people do think that way. I'm saying, what if you approach it, but they're a real serious threat, or they were like fed up with how they write. Like it's a group of kids in. A, I'm saying, uh, it's not a group of kids in a high school fed up with that sort of stuff. So they try they look to Green Arrow as a symbol, and they kind of take revenge. Though they do like a bad thing, or they look at the Dark Archer for a symbol, and they kind of don mm -hmm. arrows and they do it like that. I don't know. And there's a pink arrow. Yeah, I'm saying they have, like, they take colored arrows to kind of, you know, say this is, you know, we wear what we are on our sleeve or on our arrows, so to speak. But still, we're kind of following the set. It's the Dark Archer getting revenge on our foes. We're kind of making a public statement like anarchy or someone. That would be interesting. So there's a way you could go about it, but maybe just the group of people is with different colored arrows. Who knows? You know, I'm just saying this. If one character in particular is more popular than Green Arrow, like... I'm just, this is not, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just saying I would like for this to happen. If it does, then okay. If it doesn't, uh, all right. Like, if Henry Cavill comes in as Superman and all, and then it's like he's the one that try inspires Green Arrow to actually go more of the hero path instead of the crazed vigilante marking stuff off his list, that would be pretty cool. And it would also well, show connection. What? What would they my, okay, here's my theory. Okay, Queen consolidating, right? There, there's uh, something going on there, something business-wise. In walks Bruce Wayne. Ooh, Not yeah. Batman, but Bruce chills. Wayne. The only other thing is I, I, I keep hearing about this a new series called Amazon that's supposed to be coming out as well. New, mm. new... Maybe this is a, a back. Uh, maybe they're working a backdoor pilot in for that, which is Wonder Woman, which I think would really work. It's just uh, I'm just curious about how they're going to work this. 
I'm going to be one. honest. I think it's too risky to introduce superheroes into this. Other superheroes into this. Well, I... <sighs> I don't mind if Bruce Wayne shows up. It, I have a problem if Batman shows up. Even that, I still, have, I still am worried for it in that because it's a big thing to take on. And really, if they don't play it off perfectly, it's gonna, it's gonna go down south, or people are just gonna say, "Oh, well, there's well, well, the other yeah. heroes going into this." They can't be the right school. This, like, look at Man of Steel. That was pretty realistic. That was a realistic take because an arrow is Again. trying to be realistic. So it's like they introduce Henry Cavill Superman. It would also be like, okay, it's still realistic with a little of, like, fantasy of it. And also, it is connected. Everything is connected. The other thing I can think of is, well, we could go down down a similar route, route to Smallville, and we just, all of a sudden, there's Flash there. The actual, Barry Allen? Like, Barry Allen, not Bart Allen? Any Allen, like... I like the way they did it. In, I like the way they they did that in Smallville. Like he, he's like a, a a thief, and like he he goes by multiple identities, and they 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 do Bart Allen or they do Barry Allen or whatever. But I'd prefer I prefer a younger guy. I, I prefer I really like the guy that did do Flash in in Smallville. I like like even if he came back and did Flash again, that would be really cool. Just an older version of him would really work. I think that would work. Well, and then if you would do that, everyone would be confused because everyone would be saying, like, is this connected to Smallville somehow? I thought Justin Hartley was Green Arrow. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, he's an older guy now, so I wouldn't have... I, I'm just saying, if casting-wise, there's someone that can do do the job that I, I was just suggesting, so what, why not go, to, go after him a bit? But... Uh, and I mean, how many episodes really did that guy appear in, in Smallville in? Just a couple, so it wouldn't be too bad. But it's okay, that. you could cast someone else. That's fine. You know, but uh, I just think it should be someone younger than uh, than Oliver. It should be it should be someone between ages, someone in their mid twenties, rather than. Someone in their early twenties, so someone like that. Once they announce, once he said there are going to be people in this show that are more popular than Green Arrow, the door just opened right there for them. The well, I think yeah, I think Flash is more popular. I'm just saying it could have Flash come in, but if it, going down the villain route, but maybe it's a villain that's coming in that's more popular than Green Arrow. Yeah, because he just said characters. He never actually said it's going to be a hero. He just said characters. And if we go down that route, which villain is more popular than Green Arrow that Warner Brothers is willing to have appear in that show? Blocking. Like. I said popular. Like, really popular. I said Lex. Oh. Again, Lex would... are they willing to do that because of Man of Steel? Yeah, they're not. That's... No. Yeah. Well, mate, unless they're not planning on doing Lex right away, I would. They're probably would actually hold him in the sequel somehow. Toy Man, not as antagonist, but something. Toy Man, maybe. Uh, who? What? Toy Man. No, 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 no. I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, Batman villains, but I'm also maybe trying, Maxwell thinking, Lord. Maybe that's possible. He is kind of Wonder Woman's Lex Luthor to a degree, I guess. Really? To a very, very slight degree. I'm just I have no idea who that is. I didn't until you said that's Wonder Woman's Lex Luthor. I'm like, who's that? So, and I'm just going through my my eyes because I don't really read. I haven't read, read many well, comics. Like so. Maxwell Lord was very prominent in was it Infinity Crisis or Identity Crisis? Uh, in, in, it's not Identity. All right. Oh, I know. Well, it's like this. He was a prominent antagonist in Infinite Crisis. And in that story, he gets killed by Wonder Woman. They could be introducing Cyborg. No, that'd be a horrible idea. That's too far out there. I'm tired of them shoving that guy down our throats. I'm just thinking, because I, uh, uh, I heard he was really popular right now, so... A lot of people have been saying, maybe Nightwing. I don't want it. But they introduced Bloodhaven, would, so you never yeah. know. Why would they bring in Nightwing and not bring in... 
Who's well, playing? it's just because they have Bloodhaven the city, and that's that's Nightwing City. Well, when he left to his I know, but they introduced, so. um, they even mentioned um, Ferris Air, so they could introduce Carol Ferris, for all we know. I don't they know. can I introduce just... Jordan. I don't know. Here's the thing. I just think it's too risky a move to introduce other heroes. I don't think they're going to do it because it's that gutsy a move. I'm, I'm not saying – I'm saying at the very least wait a few seasons, like fourth season, then maybe introduce some some characters. But like, do them slowly do, and subtly. Like Bruce they, Wayne well, and Lex Luthor. Wait until fourth season. I'm sorry, what? Wait until – it's like Smallville. Wait until the fourth season to actually introduce other superheroes. Yeah. Because they wait until season four to introduce Flash. Good point. Look, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't – in this world, I think it just exists on its own but still have references to other cities and that it's part of a bigger world, but it is existing as its own city. And it's kind of up to interpretation, like if – to the big screen or something that we would have interaction with these guys. I always kind of hold the belief that these guys can exist on their own, but they, they're in a world that's open to connect to other cities. They don't necessarily have to unless it's a Justice League show. Or it's just I'm just going to say this. Something. Right now, like, there was a character that was introduced in season one that luckily I discovered it was that character before, yeah. and then it actually ties into an, another character from Teen Titans, Brian Markov. He was introduced in season one. He was the person that created the earthquake machine. Mm-hmm. It, if you read the comic, it, like, if they would have actually have gone with the comic, he's a comic book character called Geo Force, who's in the Outsiders and all that, with Black Lightning and all that, and I believe he's the older brother to Terra. Huh. So, hmm. there was that route. Yeah. I don't know. I just well, I still think I'm right now. I'm against bringing in heroes to the show. I'm gonna say that I'm I'm just against bringing in heroes in the show. At least this early. I don't even think in in general. I just think it's fine to have references to other cities. Say it's part of a big world. At the very least, I would say if you're going to bring them in, don't bring in the heroes, bring the alter egos, like Lex Luthor. I guess that would be a big stretch. But again, Man of Steel, uh, it's up in the air rights-wise. Mm. Well, we just went away from like story ideas that we had. We just went into character, so well, now we can get to uh, the story. Well, you were – you, have you said your pitch yet, or did we keep going with characters? We went from the actual well, news to characters. Okay. All right. Yeah, that is true. So let's start with story pitches. So Blue Dragon 5, you can go first. You're, you're better at story pitches than I am. Okay. A few ideas. All right. Season 2, I think what's turns going to, to happen. Ten. Sorry, what? A few turns out to be multiple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, multiple. A few ideas. A mul- multiple ideas. Assuming, I, I do think we're going to start the season where we left off because it ended on a cliffhanger. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, we're probably going to start with the the scene where. Well, before I get into it, what, what do we think about Merlin? Do we think you? What do you think about Merlin Junior. Dead or alive? Any chance of him being alive? I've got a theory about that, but I'll, I'll get get into my pitch Me, for that. Uh, even though I want to resist it so much, I think he's dead. Because that's like well, a wound you can't come back from. And unless as it's much a... as I... Sorry. Unless it's a video game, you can't come back from that wound. As much as I would like for uh, Tommy to be alive, I, I sincerely doubt it. It looks like he's pierced through the heart, or at least really close to the heart. Anyway, he's pierced through the chest, and he's like very hard to remove. Just kind of... Even if he did give him like the healing serum, I doubt it would help. The, hero, <laughs> the healing stuff from the island. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, yeah, with that, it's probably going to be if not the if not Oliver bringing the body out, it's probably going to be him like he left the premises, like maybe blew an entrance for the door so they could get through to get the body after after the chaos. It's going to be like him overlooking the stuff in horror while Laurel's going in there and they like Quentin's going in, Quentin Lance is going in there with his with the team and they're bringing the body out. Laurel's like in utter horror and shock, like well, no, not Tommy. All this madness, and it's basically going to be the first shot of the season would probably be like Oliver looking over the destroyed city while looking down, looking down his friend looking up to a destroyed city on a rooftop. 
That's your mm-hmm. opening shot right there. And I guess the theme would be the themes would be kind of rebuilding, but also kind of yeah, rebuilding would be the main theme of the series because you're kind of building more trust with everything, but still being haunted by the past. So ramifications and rebuilding would be the main themes. The ramifications is like kind of that dream sequence I kind of outlined for you. Like he's haunted by that and probably lead to him and Laurel having problems because it is kind of a shame that it was an interesting thing that. When uh, Merlin Senior died, and because uh, he is dead, because his eyes are open, I, I, I think I just use him in flashback. I think that's the way to bring him back. If he's going to be back for season two. I'm just pretty sure he's just going to be flashbacks, which could begin like seeing him trying to end the parbat. But you see, you see Oliver. Sorry, sorry. Just, again, the rain. Just trying to get on my thoughts here. Yes. I guess it would be that he knows he can't be with Laurel because of what happened with Tommy. He lies to t- he lies to Tommy saying, you know, your fa- I didn't kill your father. You know, he's he's all right. And of course, it's kind of a thing. It's just an interesting thing to say to your friend when he's dying. And it has to be something interesting has to be done with this. I'm guessing because of that, he'd be haunted by that. And he would break up with Laurel. I don't know if he'd be with Felicity or not. Possibly, maybe at least like a rebound thing. I don't know how that works. Eventually, he's gonna get back to Laurel. Laurel's mourning Tommy. Lance and him are starting to develop a relationship to rebuild the city. You know, probably me a scene between the two saying, you know, the city's in uh, utter chaos. As much as I don't want, as much as I don't want to, you're my only hope to help get the city back and running. Or the chaos is running around. I guess is me speaking from my love of Gordon. So it's kind of putting words in Lance's mouth right now. You know, I need I need help on this. And you you were with me during the times of crisis, and it didn't work. But we still got like, we stopped the city from being completely leveled. So. That's going to be kind of symbolize our relationship, I guess. We're on shaky grounds, but still, we're doing stuff. So basically, that would be the team up, and maybe he would give them the joke name of Green Arrow, because, you know, the whole Green Arrow evidence thing, you know, the whole Black Arrows for, that's how he knew it wasn't him, being the Dark Archer. Maybe he says, Green Arrow, really? Huh, better than the Hood guy. Ha, ha, ha. He looks sarcastic, because he said he hated the name Green Arrow in the Year's End episode, so... There's an idea for that. Again, rebuilding for two. Uh, let's see, three would be uh, rebuilding for two. Oh, Count Vertigo would be uh, would be a big player. China White also. I guess those two would be the city bad guys. And uh, on the island, um, yes. Uh, Kelly Hu is really wrapped up in Warehouse 13 now, so I doubt that she will be coming back. Oh, really? I didn't know. That. Yeah. Uh, there goes my theory. Just okay. Point. Well, Count Virgo would be a big player. I would, I, I would figure he'd become the resurgence because he they left him in this great spot in the, at the end of season one where he's kind of like comatose and you know he's coming back. He's still in the one. So I think that'd be great. Kind of during this chaos, he's kind of thriving in it. So we have that for uh, for two. I think it'd be great. Again, I don't know how well they listen to the message board if they or if the creators even listen to error discussions, but it'd be great if they brought in Clock King. Is out. Again, I think Clock King introduced would be great if he was a mob boss. It kind of like that one villain, uh, Cyrus Vance, if he uh, if he kind of he studied Green Arrow and he knew how to he knew how to female, he knew how many arrows, like how fast he throws things. Basically, Clock King as a master planning as a master planner mob boss, in that he he organizes these perfect heists that go off of that hitch. He instructs his men to the second, so he commit these perfect robberies. And basically, you know, that'd be his undoing. And again, like uh, it was said previously, for said previously what, that what he uh, yes. Um, can I, can I mention something? Yes. I'm looking up a little article about Arrow season two. Okay. One of the producers, mainly Guggenheim, has yes. said Argo, like for Detective Lance, Argo has always been to make him our version of Commissioner Gordon. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so happy. There you go. That's well, season there, two. And Diggle well, will have your, flashbacks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there, there there's you your, go. Uh, yeah, there's, there's your in for them to kind of working together and be more building trust. Also building trust into because it's under it – it was kind of left under shaking circumstance because I don't know exactly – it's not like Arrow's going to get a, a 
real warm welcome after all the chaos that ensued at the end of season one. So it's basically building trust as well as rebuilding the city and everything. And basically, I think Oliver might take more because of all this damage. He might take more of a role in the company. Since Moira's gone, he's going to have to step up and step up more ways than once. He's going to have to take on the responsibility of uh, the company if uh, Walter Walter will help him out. I assume if Walter doesn't take the take over, at the very least, I think I think Oliver's going to be involved in the company a little more to kind of help get things working in the glades, in the glades in the city, yeah. and kind of we get more of the rich uh, corporate Oliver. But you know, still he's not a real corporate guy. He's just using the resources. And, you know, Felicity's job there. And now there's an understanding between the two even more so. Maybe she's mm-hmm. like she's shaken by the events and she's kind of hesitant to come back and he talks her into it. Diggle's going after Deadshot for season two and we get it close to that, whatever that close would be. I would assume that uh, Diggle has the opportunity to kill Deadshot, but he doesn't. I don't think uh, – I don't think Diggle should – I think Diggle should kind of – Oliver becoming more heroic in this season by not killing people. And Diggle would kind of mm-hmm. follow in that influence, and then he wouldn't kill him. Kind of rising up over the brother, but still, I don't know. He gets some sort of revenge in there. Like he maybe, maybe it's a little risky. I'm just right now. I'm spitting on this idea right now. Maybe if he blinded Deadshot, like the other eye, maybe it's like two cybernetic eyes. Mm. It's a little risky. I'm just, I'm, it's, a, it's an idea just coming out of my head right now. So it's, I don't know. He has to do That's something. That's not a little risky. Very risky. Yeah, that's probably right about that. But either way, he has to do something to Deadshot if he doesn't kill him. But if he kills him, be good. I, I guess that would end his arc, and after that, it would be Diggle kind of figuring, where do I fit into this now? I mean, I've, I don't want to do. I really solved my problem. He's probably going to maybe be a little hesitant to coming back because he really solved his goal for the list. Or if he calls it into question, killing Deadshot, and he doesn't do it, he's kind of thinking like, what, what kind of state am I in now? We used to kill people. That really deserved it. I mean, we gave him a chance to fix a city, but now if I'm not doing that, what am I doing with my life? With uh, with you, Oliver, what are what are we doing now? And he's kind of him recognizing Oliver's transition to the point that Diggle wanted him to originally, you know, like foiling bank robbers, hence the Royal Flush Gang originally, taking on more street crime, which again Oliver would have to do because of all the chaos that ensued in the Glades. Him coming to grips with his purpose. On the island, we have I say uh, I say Lady Shiva. That's that's all. I, that's who I say it is. That's who I say the uh, the well the well legged woman is is uh, okay. Lady Shiva. That's all I got. I mean, if I were really stretching, I would say Talia, but I doubt that. Man, <laughs> the small scale plan for Talia just to insert war between two countries or two places. Mm. Two countries. But uh, sorry, I'm sorry I'm going on for so long. It's just kind of. Oh no, no, we're used to it by now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I let you do it in the commentaries quite often. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, clocking is a as I say, clocking is a mob boss. Would be great. Mm. And uh, at the end of two, I'm I'm vehement about this. And again, I'm on board with uh, I'm board with you guys on this, especially for Magpie. I think it'd be great if at the end of two we see a figure like come like enter, and it's uh, we find out that it's Slade Wilson with an eye patch. <laughs> if it's Slade, it's Slade Wilson. He enters the city after things are starting to get on the fast track to getting better. So it's kind of like an omen that all bad stuff's coming. Maybe in the flash well, we, we see. We need that. The, yes, that damn eye patch. Yes, we need the eye patch. So he's. And basically, he enters the sea at the end. The, the whole thing on the island would be, you know, Lady Shiva would be behind, pulling the strings and basically bringing more trouble to the island. I don't know if they get off a few times or not, but we'll see how that how that goes. They exit the island a few times, but end up back there somehow. But it also would be great if, you know, we see Deadshot's, a little more from Deadshot's POV, but also basically we see the betrayal, the breakup of the relationship in two. And season three, we would get... Uh, we would get dead. Sh- we no, sorry. We would get Deathstroke. Death yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of the other one because I went on I was talking about him and Diggle. But Deathstroke. Because their names are so similar. Yeah. And Deathstroke yeah. would know who he was. He would be able to instantly recognize it from the moves or like the look of this guy, and he would recognize because Lauf 
uh, Lao Fei had the outfit on, and I'm assuming he donned it on the island, the green, the green suit. And also, he knows some of the moves. Oh he yeah, he told him some of the moves. It's like, really, Oliver, you could have done better than that. I taught you better. Pow. Yeah, maybe he's like going to the Russian brothel, getting some information, or like just beating the crap out of him, just for fun. Get mm-hmm. just like kind of get more info on Oliver. So you learn Russian, huh? Impressive. And see, so you picked up that trait from the I don't know stuff like that, and essentially it'd be him uh, in three, just be like this menacing presence. Like at first he's kind of like looming around there, he's kind of kind of tracing his steps to Oliver in the first episode, and at the end of it, hello. <laughs> and then, and then in, you know, like, in the flashbacks, in the flashbacks for season three, that's kind of like the like the that the flashbacks are kind of showing the separation of those two. Yeah. Yeah, we see kind of what they did after they broke up for season three. All right. Okay. But and uh, yeah, season three, and then uh, we also we would have a uh, copycats. So we would have a uh, Cupid, who I, I would like to see Cupid in the hunter's back. You kind of like a love triangle Catwoman thing. Like Cupid would be an imit would be an imitator of Green Arrow, like one of the many imitators I feel I find. Again, another the, prominent. Yes. So we could have, yeah, we could have Cupid as kind of a. She was saved by Green Arrow, then she was imitating him. But instead of becoming a stalker, be kind of, kind of, be let askew, kind of the path, kind of like Helena, just kind of, kind of killing people or maybe using her ability to uh, steal or just maybe turn, make turn villainous, but still being inspired by Green Arrow, someone named Cupid who steals, kind of like Catwoman. There's kind of like a love triangle when Helena comes into the picture. An episode with those three in mind. Kind of going at each other, <laughs> and then uh, also throw Speedy into the mix because Speedy's going to be a big player into maybe he's on his own, but then three is him becoming more affiliated with Green Arrow than either by the end or by midway through, if not already in two, he would be part of a uh, he'd be part of officially part of Green Arrow's team. And uh, let's see if I'm missing anything. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Uh, let me see. I'm almost done. Almost done. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, get a regal on, because we've still got Mr. A and May to go. Sorry. Yeah, the, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh... So Dash would be the main Dash would be the main bad guy on the island. Uh... See the breakup happening. I think that's... I think that's it for three. And he'd be working to fish completely with Lance. Lance would trust him now. Work on case he wouldn't kill anyone. It'd be just... In partnership. Also, uh... Maybe a hint at Black Canary. Towards the end of three, maybe again, if you introduce the whole Sonic technology, the idea I have with Sonic technology is basically screaming Banshee, Superman film, a villain would go in there. She would have like a, a Sonic device instead of natural ability, and maybe that device gets harnessed for a uh, for Laurel to be Black Canary if she like joined down the line in Black Canary. I, I think that's I think it's good in a nutshell. What do you yeah. think? I think it I think it all works. Yeah. I've got a few I've got a few similar ideas, so but uh I'll I'll let Mr. E go if he, he wants to go really quick. Oh, mine, mine's or, gonna be short. Mine's gonna be short, uh, sweet and simple. Because I sorry. have like no I have no threshed out ideas that I want. It's just like general consensus is. I know season two is gonna be the darker season. That's oh, probably yeah. gonna be the dark season. Um we're getting two antagonists, and me, in my mind, Amanda Waller should be one of them, and some other dude, whoever would do that, I don't know. I don't really, General like, Island. when they, well, to me, I want them both to be on the city. Like, somehow, like, one villain has one thing to do with Green Arrow, the other villain has something completely different, like, they're not connected, they're just separate. What if sort Amanda like, Waller grew up in the Glades? Um, who knows? I'm saying, what if? I mean, say in, the, in Green Lantern, we see her origin. Basically, she's like in a little Harlemish town. Yeah, mm-hmm. so there you go. Okay. Could be. But, uh, let, let, keep going, mystery. Um, they, I remember this being said. I didn't want to tell you guys this one. But they even said Oliver will have a new love, love interest in season two. So there's that Cupid okay. thing. No, 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 no. They didn't say it. They just said he'll have a new love interest. So there's the Cupid thing, in your opinion. Yeah. Um, 
to me, um, this story just needs to be a little bit darker, like more about his consequences, him feeling a little on edge, him not feeling that he's doing everything to his full potential. For stuff on the island, I really kind of want close to the separation of Slade and Oliver, kind of them like beginning to part ways and start being more antagonistic towards each other. I want Shadow to die. Really? And that kind of being the vocal point of why those two, like, separated 100%. Yeah, what if Deathstroke killed her? Yeah, like, ultimately being the... That was the thing that separated ties and all. Deathstroke's getting more menacing and more crossing lines. Yeah. And he's uh, being unnecessarily violent, like, getting threatening to the point where you think he might attack Oliver and they kill Shadow. Shadow. Um... Mm. Maybe. Um, more for villains. I really want Clark King to come in. I really want Automatia to come in. He's one oh, of those no. villains. I think it would be great to show. Um, I want the Rainbow Archer for some reason. It's just that his character seems very um, like his very, his character seems interesting. So I wouldn't mind seeing the Rainbow Archer coming in. I want them to continue going on this streak of creating their own characters as well. And, like, maybe for some other villains, they could probably bring in um, Solomon Grundy for some reason, somehow. Well, you know who they bring in better than Solomon Grundy? Well, that's the first... When you said Cyrus Vance, I had no idea who you were talking about until you actually described him to me. And then I was thinking, well, Solomon Grundy's real name is Cyrus. Cyrus Gold. Maybe. So maybe he could be Solomon Grundy in the future. Well, he's not dead. No, I thought he was. Oh, he lived. Remember, he lived. Uh, Lance could have killed him, but he didn't. Yeah. Um, then what if it was Brick? Brick's like big mob muscle. He could be kind of the Grundy. Yeah. Make two characters make him one. Um, for like the popular characters when they announce him. In my mind, you can have Green Lantern and Flash, but not as Barry Allen or Hal Jordan. They can still be Alan Scott, um, Jay Garrett, and like have say they have ties with um, Laurel's mother. It's kind of like they were old friends of the family. Well, yeah, well. But Look, they I didn't think Laurel, they Laurel, Laurel's, uh, Laurel, Laurel, Laurel's mother does know a doctor. Exactly. <laughs> it could be a nice reference, but they can't be heroes if they do that, because then she's a normal powered lady. She doesn't have any screaming well, abilities at all. Like this. Like, if they do do it, they could sort of have it like where Jay kind of like discovered a little thing like that created superpowers and all, or like that kind of had that sonic thing. It was just a prototype, though. And that was what um, Dinah's mother was using, like, beforehand. But then it's like, once Dinah was born, she kind of stopped. Or well, once Laurel was born, she stopped doing all this. And I don't all, think and the actress they... Sorry. And I, that I Jay... Actress... Keeps on going. Sorry. You oh, want... it's all right. Uh, I'm okay. good for right now. I was going to say that I don't think the actress can pull that off, being uh, well, Black I... Canary's mother. Hey, anything can be pulled off. It just doesn't seem like the experience actress, experienced enough. That actress that plays Black Canary's mother? Come on, man. She, uh, she, she pl- She's in Doctor Who when she plays, essentially, Black Canary. <laughs> See, there you go. Uh, like, c- come on. It's, uh, she's a flirtatious cougar with, who's awesome in that. She's totally, uh, like... I can totally see uh, her coming out, uh, coming back in into this and and, and showing her, her her some stuff because come on. Uh. And I still want this, even though it's not like a major plot point at all. It's just something that I really want. I want Laurel to dye her hair blonde. That's not really that, that canary character. I mean, come on, when I just. When I saw her first and she was that character, I was like, Black Canary's hair is supposed to be blonde. So I was just like, please, just dye her blonde. And I've you even know, seen the actress with hair, so it's just like, why couldn't you just keep the blonde hair? 
That's all well, I'm two, saying. Two things. One, uh, I actually see a possible in for dyeing her hair blonde, but it's kind of cheesy, and I think it's something the CW might do. It would be if she said, well, Tommy always said he she wanted my hair dyed blonde. Oh, come yeah. on. I know, it's, I know exactly. It's really weak, but here, actually, in, exactly, in all, so, memory of Tommy, I will dye my hair blonde. That's a C. That's exactly. That's a CW move right there. But I'm saying, I hope that's probably. I hope that's not going to happen. That's something that's a potential if you really want it that bad. But two, actually, in Longbow Hunters, and they might have. That's a might, might be a reason they're really not so. They're not so pessimistic about the, the blonde hair. The creators, I mean, like they didn't really strive for it with her, is because in the Longbow Hunters she doesn't have blonde hair, or at least it's either a wig or nothing because she has a, she has short have- dark hair. I have the graphic novel Justice and all, and that ha- that Black Canary has brown hair. She just wears a blonde wig. So if they do okay. that, I'm fine. Just as long yeah. as they somehow go down the road of men- of like getting closer to like the blondness. Actually, that's much better because it'd be a help hide her identity if she had blonde hair. And mm. she could wear the classic Black Canary mask. They also help it. Yeah. Nobody ever will tell her who she was, so she wouldn't be fired from I- her practice. My final thing I want to say about what I want in season two is that I wanted to see more like a like get more comic booking and all. The season one, they waited until the second half of the season to actually get like a comic book. So I want to really get more comic booking in season two. Fair enough. Oh, I had my uh, add the onomatopoeia idea to mine because that's awesome. I want to either debate him or at least with the mask. Mm. Oh, I could see him in like the mask and like just completely wearing black, not like a complete um. Wear like, overcoat. Overcoats are awesome. Like wearing a trench coat, black combat boot, like wearing black, and then having the onomatopoeia mask. Listen to the commentary. I love the overcoat. It could look great. Or the trench coat. Just really look great on him with the mask and dressed in black. But also, it'd be great if he's employed by Clock King, or Clock King would also employ other guys like that brick guy, maybe. I'm still you know. saying Clock King is not worthy enough to be a game leader. I think, I'm saying yeah. just the perfect mastermind behind things. Or he could be hired and then take over the gang. I mean, hang, like a mob oh, yeah. boss, not a gang. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. I had another villain in mind. Introduce calculator as like someone who use who's like who knows um Roy and all mm-hmm. and like happen to where um they both were in juvie together or like something and where the only the reason or the way Roy started knowing calculator and started working with him was through juvie and that kind of they kind of had a friendship between them. And then have Roy kind of like, okay, I need you to hack in. I want you to try to hack into the Hood's computer and all that, just so I can see where he is and if I can actually ask him if I could help. And then they go through that entire ordeal. Calculator is able to help, and he gets it, and he, like, runs away for a while. And then he comes back, and he's actually, like, a mainstream hacker for money. He's a, he's a hacker for hire. Maybe that, okay. oh, and also maybe some like low level operations again, like uh, doing the Superman three move, stealing all the stealing all the cash. Well, stealing tra- cash electronic, you know, hacking the bank accounts, that sort of stuff. But it became well known, as you're saying. But also, he became a well known hacker, and he could contend with Felicity. Yeah, that's what I was mainly. Really? Yeah, Felicity Smoke. Making sure I'm not getting that. For some reason, I think I'm getting that wrong. Yeah, it's been a while. It's just that for me, I really think Felicity seems like the smartest person in the entire series. I just want someone that can compete with her intellect. Yeah. In that great action scene, it's my one of my favorite action scenes in the whole series when it was like jumping, going through all the doors, jumping rooftops. And I thought it was like a hacker contending with her, but it was just, you know, it was the thing was moving. All right. That could be the calculator. So, now it's your turn, Magpie. Magpie. All right. Uh... My overarching thing for for this season is Oliver is really affected by what happened uh, at the end of last season. Okay, he's uh, everything's going great. Uh, great uh, afterwards, everything go like everything goes along pretty much. But uh, 
The city still kind of hates him for not saving them in time. But La- uh, Lance is like, oh no, it's it's it was all it, I, it's my fault. Uh, you or or there was nothing that either of us could have done to prevent what what happened and. He still, but he still blames himself throughout the season, and and this kind of wears on his relationship with Laurel all the way all the way through it, and uh, eventually they do break up. And uh, thanks for pointing out that there's a new love interest mystery because uh, this is, all helps me. Uh, the overarching thing, though, I like all your ideas for villains, so I'm not not against that. But my whole idea is redemption. He's but he's throughout the season he's in this funk, and then mid season he sort of starts you start to see him coming out of it, and he's he's plugging along really great. And then a relationship starts with Felicity, and Laurel still has feelings for Oliver uh, right up till the finale. Like she she's. She's always like, I, I can get him back. Uh, I want to get him back, and uh, maybe she, she decides. Maybe she uh, part way through, she d- decides not to, to. But then eventually she decides she, if she realizes she wants Oliver back, she walks in and sees Felicity kissing Oliver, and she turns around. She, they don't. Neither one of them see her. See. And neither Felicity or or Oliver see her. But it's in the club, so we don't see anything uh and she walks away and she's crying and uh she gets back to her apartment and out of uh, off to the side of the camera we see huntress and she uh, and she walks over to her gives her this neck collar because i've I've been looking at some pictures of uh, of, uh yeah uh of black canary and uh, she says I got this from a friend who uh, I got this from a, a, a girlfriend who likes bats. I got this from a guy who looks like Morgan Freeman. It's an elegant solution uh, instead of uh, having uh, Laura walk in and see him having sex through an open window. <laughs> yeah. Or what if yeah, Huntress but, was doing it, just like spying on them? Just be weird. Yeah, no, no. I like the idea that she, uh, she, uh, and we said, do see her at the beginning of that episode break out of prison or, or something. That'd be cool. I'm on board for that. But also, uh, two, one thing, Magpie. Why? Well, what? Oh, okay, I've still got some more to say. So, oh, but sorry, just real quick, just at the beginning. Things interesting when you said uh, that the, the city would blame uh, Green Arrow because really they shouldn't. But then thinking about it, they've kind of looked to this guy as a hero, and now that he let him down in their time of need. But I like that he Lance is not exactly covering. It'd be an idea if Lance wasn't exactly covering for him, but instead blaming himself internally, which I think would be a great idea. Yeah, so that I think would work. kudos to that. I, I I can see it going either way. I just I, I just really would like to see him like in this funk throughout the first half of the season and. Just to hear hear blow himself up, dude. To say, oh, I'm just sick and tired of him in this funk. That's only like two episodes in. <laughs> That's a good idea, man. Like, I'm in love with that. Yeah, but I, um, the thing is, you don't you don't want to see he he's got he's got to be affected by this for quite a while. I want to see 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 this really affect him, and I want it to to destroy most of his relationships. Yeah. Uh, as far as Diggle goes, I don't. I like to see him. Get close to Deadshot, but not get, uh, but always be like, I missed him, or I can't, I, I, I can, I just missed him, or, or something. Oh, Magpie, you're saying all the right stuff right now. <laughs> like you're saying, it's, it's, look at the symbolism here. He's like the he, Deadshot, oh, never misses, or at least he's, that's his tagline. And then D- Diggle misses him by that much. Yeah, you know, it gets hard, <laughs> but still, be. Wow, well, well, I have a question. Lance like, failed the city. Writer for the show. I'm sorry. What? Sorry. Are you a writer for the green for Arrow? <laughs> no. About. But also, make by another great thing you said was when you said that Lance, you know, he's beating himself up. But think about it. Lance to himself failed the city. Like Oliver's always afraid of, and Oliver's kind of, you know, always going after saying that to people. You know, you failed the city. Also, I think we we also forgot a character. Well, forgot two characters. We have Mo- Moira and. Uh, and the Moira, Moira, Moira dies, uh, dies dies in the first episode. 
<laughs> oh, come on, really she's in jail. Know. Lighten up a smidgen. Just a smidgen. Uh, I don't care about Moira, so I'm, I'm going to have no respect. Oh, Huntress, kill, uh, Huntress kills the mother. Well, at least she does. Because she failed this city. Yeah, you, yeah, Huntress kills the mother. Or it's, uh, well, uh, I think that, that could work. Well, you know, you think, if you think. You know, it'd be great for Diggle and uh, Oliver in this season. Kind of not 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 taking away from what you said, man. But I'm still saying keep that. But what I'm saying is kind of theme wise, you're kind of a they they have they switch roles in that they're looking for where Diggle was looking for purpose in the first one. It's now Oliver looking for purpose, and Diggle's on a mission, an obsessed mission to find Deadshot. It's kind of Oliver now saying to him. Look, you have to stop. You're going over the line. Believe me, I know. You told me this yourself. Something like that. Mm. Yeah, there's an idea for you. I'm just saying that's. I love what you say. You're saying all the right stuff, Magpie. Yeah, it's either that, or we can we can flash forward eight years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guy named Deadshot killed my killed my brother. Not my parents in an alley, but my brother. Mm. Uh, as I far as his name on his chest. Yeah. Yeah, as far as um, I'm hoping that uh, Fli- I'm glad for listening he's not dead because I just read that she's going to be a main character in the next few se- seasons. But I like the idea of Tommy haunting Oliver throughout the season. But the other thing I see, see going forward is they can never find Tommy's body for some reason. Really? And it's revealed in one of the last seasons. Uh, but we... Uh, I like like this idea because I got this from um, I got it's a similar idea to something that happened in Lois and Clark. Okay. The uh, idea is that Tommy, uh, we slowly introduce these other more sci-fi ideas, and like eventually we lead up to cryogenics, and that's where Mr. Freeze comes. Tom in. it to, Tommy comes into it, yeah, and then. Uh, uh, in the last episode, we see Tommy come out of the uh, uh, cryogenic frozen state. Are you saying he, he becomes wants... Mr. Freeze? No, no, he becomes... Like, this is my idea. Is it, Like, Tommy, it, for this entire time, they can never find... Uh, they, they've dug, dug up the uh, everything, that's ha- uh, all the ruins, or we imply that it's going to take forever to clean up the... Glades. Glades, yeah, the glades, and we just can't. And they just can never f- seem to find Tommy's body. Uh, but the thing is, to- uh, Tommy is dead. But, uh, but uh, like, he's not dead. He's he's brought back to life somehow. Uh, is my th- this is what I would want. It, is that he doesn't come back for a few seasons, but we get glimpses of stuff, uh, and we just don't know what it is. But it's all building to this, uh, the return of Tommy as the Dark Archer. I think it would be a good way to bookend the series as we started with a dark archer we end with a dark archer well, look it's it's not that I, believe, I would love to see uh, Tommy become the dark archer I would love that. I'd love for Tommy not to be dead oh, yeah I just for... uh, I, that's why I said it's got to be gradual it's got to be we've got to gradually build up to this uh, this uh, this uh, more comic booky world yeah. well they've uh, officially announced following characters have been officially announced by the producers to be like dead Malcolm and Tommy they're officially oh, dead. Darn. They've been declared legally darn. dead. But that, that was just a, that was just a theory that, uh, okay, they But they are coming back in flashback, aren't they, Mr. E? I believe I so. I thought that was... Yeah, okay, that's good. And maybe the dream that's... thing... I love that dream sequence. Good idea could could work. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy just keeps telling him over and over again, you failed me, Tommy. You, you failed, failed me. this city. You fa- if you failed me, Oliver, you failed me. You could, and you then just say, Oliver just... Uh, like, all I saw... And All those phrases. An entire episode dedicated to Oliver just trying to stop his guilt. Yeah. And you could have and maybe, like this big, like this can be like the big guest star, like big um episode where the person who plays Tommy has like a big significant episode in season two. And instead of post traumatic stress towards the island, there may be kind of a mix of that with uh, his guilt over Tommy, kind of like reminiscent of the good times, a little bit of the nightmare, but also some of the stuff on the island. So the kind of the death of, Sh- of Shadow would factor into all that, kind of all the people he's failed. Kind of roll into mm. a ball and the betrayal of like, you know, had, maybe he feels to an extent he betrayed Deathstroke, even though he's becoming more extreme. Maybe like, maybe 
while he's defending himself against De- Destro. He's like shooting him, maybe shot him in the eye with the arrow, just to like defend himself against the guy, or like trying to save Sh- Shadow, even though it didn't work. Maybe. Hmm. I'm saying it's an right. idea, but also, I'm sorry to take steam away from that, but there's two, uh, two problems with the cryonics thing. Cryogenics. So. Yeah, it was just a theory. Well, yeah, yeah, it's just the two problems is, uh, you know, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to cut you down here. It's just, well, they know where he is. It's outside the one building. And two, yeah. and two, it's I, again, it's not. I don't be on board for it. I think it's physically impossible though to get him from there. In this, the building was on fire too, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Getting it from there to a chronic chamber. Plus, he's impaled, so trying to cauterize the wound and getting him out of no, there. I, and, I don't know. That's why I said this would be probably years off as well. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Okay. It's just saying I don't know how it will work. Okay, as far as Slade goes, we do the arc uh, on the island. Uh, we maybe have another villain come to the island or something. Uh, and uh, obviously, I-, I would go that they're Russians. For some reason, they're coming to this island too. KGB. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's something like that. They, they, they. He's a Batman villain, and he's Russian, and he has a giant gun on his arm. He could be there modern day working for the Russians, or he could be there, and maybe that's where he lost the arm. Idea, sorry. Yeah, yeah. you probably see his arm get cut off, but Slade gets taken off the island by these Russian guys, and... They torture him? Yeah, we don't, we don't, see, we don't see it. Like, that's the last episode. He's like, they're, they're, for this entire se- season, it's a similar, similar story. They, they keep, they keep fight, fighting them and fighting them and uh, fighting them, uh, trying to get, get off. They're st- but they're, and they're still trying to find a way off the island. But Slade gets kidnapped. And he's, uh, maybe, maybe this is how you could tell the story of he, how he lost his eye and the, the way the guy lost his arm as well. Yeah. KG Beast. And... He he's going off on a a boat off the island, a speedboat or something, to to a much bigger boat or something, and he's going Oliver, screaming back at him, and, and Oliver's going slay, and we flash back to the present. At the end of the episode, we see Slade with his mask on and the. Oh, he's masked up, and he's got that eye patch, and he pulls it back down, and he's full in a, in full um, Deathstroke outfit. Magpie, you're saying all the right stuff again. Oh, I know. So here's so, what, uh, what if you did this? What if you did this? Okay, uh, Deathstroke again. Maybe if he maybe if he was getting a little too extreme, he cut the guy's arm off, and that's why KGB wants to bring him back to torture him. He brings him back to torture him. Oliver failed. He failed Slade. And he feels, yeah. maybe he feels guilt. He feels guilty about it. again, kind of connecting it to the other things we got rolling here. And he feels guilty that you know he, betray, he didn't betray him, but he feels guilty that he couldn't you know couldn't help the guy that taught him and basically protected him on the island for so long. He gets taken off there, and basically the the reveal shot could be this: you see a scarred on the back and all over, kind of like how he was, how Oliver was scarred through his experience yeah. in the torture and stuff. You see like a scarred, a shirtless Destro from the back. He's like all scarred up, and he's like he's grabbing like on a dresser or something. I don't know. He's grabbing an eye patch. He's putting it on. We see that, but then he's like he he's dying the mask right before like the credits. Yeah, yeah. And he turns and face the camera. Yes, and yeah, yeah. That's it. And that's how we end the season. Oh, uh, it. it's not a cliffhanger. We just know next it's season it's we've got death. Season two. Yeah. Yeah, you're like there. Like, three, he grabs like a bus three. ticket to go to uh, Star City. Well, so Starling Star. Star City. That's I'm still I waiting. I'm still <laughs> thinking like eventually, like they're gonna get a mayor or someone like that and say, "Okay, we've officially decided to change the name of the city. We're calling it Star City. We're taking out the Ling." We've decided mm. to evolve as a city. We've rebuilt uh, we've rebuilt the glades, and now what we're going to do is, instead of being a starling, we're going to be the full star. We are going to be what we as- we're going to be the aspirant instead of aspiring to be. We're going to be the star of a city. Very cheesy and hokey, I know, but still, it's, I'm just come up with an idea why we go from ling to star. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yes, uh, that that's ba- basically like I like uh, I just like the idea of, and this is why I also liked the Dark Knight Rises is because it was a whole story about redemption. Mm-hmm. So you only see one end to your journey. I've set your bones and mend your wounds. I won't bury you. And uh, that 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 seems really effect- uh, like that. I I feel that that movie was definitely made by someone who truly uh, loved Batman on screen. Even though it was Christopher Nolan. Mm. You should try swords. Swords are cool. No, bow. No, 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 no. Bow ties and feathers are cool. <laughs> Bro, so and you're the doctor. Mm, well, guys, unless there's anything else you guys want to bring up, uh, I think we can end. We can we can end this there because uh, we we've been going for an hour and ten minutes on this one. Uh, not uh, that's including our bit of joking at the beginning. So, well, uh, Mister, you have anything to say before I? Uh, I'm I'm good. I didn't have that many plot points. I didn't try to like flesh out all the characters. So, well, yeah, I'll I try to include at least all the key ones, uh, like Slade and Laurel. Wait, and I, I would really like this character that we really didn't touch upon. None of Fear. us. Fear. Yeah, she's a character we have not touched upon. Okay, well, okay, well, let, let's do let's do. But I'll, I'll I can tell you. Okay, what I would like to see from Thea. Well, I don't Walter. know what. Theater. I don't know what to see in Thea, so that's why I never touched upon it. Uh, I would just like to see her and Arsenal, or whatever he wants to be called. The Red Arrow. Red Arrow. Uh, them team up, and they're like they're doing their own own thing. They they do not find out who Oliver actually is, but they decide, okay, we're gonna we're gonna train ourselves and. Uh, taking up archery and maybe Oliver sees something in them and he finally reveals himself to them. Like again, this would, I would not do a lot of this stuff until the final few episodes at least because um, maybe there is accurate. So like maybe there is just really good at archery as well. She's been, and we find out, well, okay, for some reason she's been do- uh, doing, doing, Really well at archery for years, while the while the was on the island as well. I mean, it might be, sound a bit coincidental, but I I think it, it could work. Magpie, you're three for three. You're saying the right things again. But uh, yeah, I like uh, I, I like the idea of like Thea kind of helping him along. She's kind of his di- she's kind of his diggle, if you will. Kind of a diggle and Felicity mixed together, in that she's kind of along the for the ride. Maybe. I'm saying maybe he studied him and maybe he took up archery. Maybe she literally enrolls him in archery classes to get him to learn a little bit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It'd be funny if there are a lot of people in, enlisting in the archery class because they love the hood guy or like maybe they're intrigued by the guy. Yeah. yeah. Again, imitators could happen. But anyway, yeah, I think that's a good idea of her helping him out on the room. But then eventually Oliver. I just don't think you should hold it off to the last season, though. I think. Well, no, last like three or four. This, but- Last episode of the no, last episode of the, this season. You don't want to rush this whole group to get it together. Otherwise, you would not not be calling it Arrow. You'd be calling it Arrows. I think. I think. However, the team up, like you know, her kind of helping him along would be good for two. But again, like having like be part of a team for like four, season four or something. Wouldn't it be good though if, if uh, Theo was the first one to join up, not the Red Arrow? It was Theo that was the first one to find out? And like she's got to keep this all secret from him, uh, all uh, as well. So we're sort of seeing the reverse of uh, reverse angle on the Oliver Laurel type angle. Well, I don't see how they could uh, how they could not. Uh, only one of them could know because basically, they're, if they both work together on the thing, like you know, she'd be helping him out, like knowing he's trying to be like the vigilante guy to meet him and thank him. Well. The way I see it is she sort of investigates on her own and somehow stumbles upon uh, Oliver's alter ego sort of way. Maybe she's snooping through his bedroom or something and she comes across the outfit or so, something to set, something to set up the that list. she knows. Uh, or, yeah, well, 
Well, the whistle's still going to be dolled like, doll back, like, isn't it? Oliver at the club, and then it's like she just looks everywhere, and then she goes into the secret room. Oh, she should run the club. Well, if he is going to be more immersed being Green Arrow, and if she did find out, she should run the club, kind of taking Merlin's She's place. She's 18. That's a little young to run a club. Well, I mean, I'm saying... Is the She's now 15. I said 18. No, oh, she could she could do it. Well, I mean her and she she's she's working at the club for some reason. Uh, but I I don't like the idea of her stumbling into the so-called arrow cave. I think it's a bit too much. I mean, uh, she investigates it, but maybe sees a clue. But two two uh two things to address before I before we go. Uh, one, you know, it'd be a great opening thing. We have to open it with like something with the list. Like he's doing something with either he's burning the list because now it serves no purpose, or he's like kind of, like, holding in his hand, thinking of what to do. Like, maybe after that shot of him looking down to see, like, he holds the list in his hand saying, what do I do, Father? Or something like like that. Kind of implied, uh, but, you know, it's kind of... Uh, the only reason I, these people still have to be punished. Yeah. Well, maybe that's my only thing. Uh, the only thing is, this might, it might may no longer be paramount, but he still says, all these people in this book still need to be punished and like we can like uh, we do a couple of those uh, knock someone off the list episodes uh, once or twi- twice maybe three times a season yeah, but, let's but not that's not off. paramount that's not that's not the paramount thing well I, like, was, I read that the paramount thing of um, season two is that the glades are destroyed so that it's like instead of the list being the great thing that's the great thing that's the thing yeah. that he's trying to fix. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, that works. It's like the he narrows with just... Nolan drilling. Yeah, he's yeah. got to be something physical with the list. It's just like symbolic of something. I'm saying, like, I want to see like a, some sort of shot about that. He has to do something with the list, like either burn it or something is what I think. But also, I can't believe I didn't bring this up at all. But this is the last thing I'm going to bring up. One of my favorite things in regards to Batman are the gadgets, and one of my favorite things, Green Arrow, in regards are the trick arrows. So what do we feel? What do we feel about that? Do we want them in season two? I want to joke I... about the glove arrow. I want to joke about the boxing glove arrow. If we actually get a boxing glove arrow, I'll be fine with it. But I just want to joke. Uh, yeah. Like he says, well, uh, like I've got to make the, I've got to be more accurate. Otherwise, I'm going to have to invent a boxing glove arrow. Oh yeah. I, Something I, along those lines. Yeah, as a, uh, is the popular arrow. <laughs> I want. Uh, I I would love the trick arrows. We got a little. We've been getting a little bit of the trick arrows. Nothing major, but still, even the little stuffs. Great, like in the Royal Flush Gang episode, we had like the the one with the coil come out, like the block the money from being taken. Hmm. I thought I thought that was neat, and of course, the first one was the zip line arrow. And the explosion, and of course, the really useful one, the uh, recording device arrow. Yeah. That's been used that a lot. Works. That's great. I love uh, the arrows. I would love more of them to be used. Uh, I, I'd like a mini cam arrow. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, I have. I literally I, I had a log the list of arrows I have. Why do we need to record only their voices? We can record what they're doing. Yeah, like a, like it's a USB stick, but it's also got like a camera on it, like a little mini cam. In addition to uh, the boxing uh, glove arrow, they have to have the buzzsaw arrow. Okay. Do they oh, really cool. need? But it's cool. It can be used in yeah, emergencies to cut through glove. a pipe. The boxing glove arrow. Yes. You know when that's like used, a, it has to have like a big bill, like the musical bill, which is a huge surprise, like kind of like that rocket launcher line from Diggle. I'm the guy holding the rocket launcher. Or I'm the guy holding the bazooka. Or, <laughs> you know, like that. It just kind of shoots it without question, but then it just pops out of there and hits the guy. Like, yeah, the, you know what? I'd like to say, uh, for some reason, they've got to get uh, get away from someone in a hurry, and they they got to sort of launch some sort of raft or something. And it looks like a... And someone's, uh, and someone says, oh, "It looks like a boxing glove or something." <sighs> no, but I'm working on it, <laughs> and then shoots it up in the air. So, like, I got this uh, this picture of this thing at the end of an arrow that uh, bursts into, into something bigger, sort of thing, and it's, it says airbag arrow. Yeah, an airbag arrow. Yeah, or that something. might be it. I, I vaguely remember that, but uh, yeah, again, I have I've had these catalog. I don't have that one catalog yet, so I gotta have that. 
if I can find it, though. Mm-hmm. It's like the glue oh, arrow, well. or the adhesive arrow, I mean, that's, that's a good one. What would you need in a glue arrow? <laughs> well, I mean, like to disarm a gun, you know, as far as the wood shoots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like glue, well, so- like, you know, block the gun. Why doesn't you shoot the arrow? If that accurate, you can shoot an arrow in the end of the pistol. Well, I mean, it's all, I'm saying in addition to the gun, it's also like sticking them to the wall for the cops to show up, that sort of stuff. Like Spider-Man, you know, but it's just for an arrow. Okay. But I mean, it has, it's multi-use. A lot of, I love the trick arrows so much, you know, a lot of great stuff. Also, like a little magnet that's kept in his heel from Batman, or even the bold. That, that's neat, but either way. I think, uh, well, that's the last topic I have. I think we came up with some really good ideas here, brainstorming. Well, yeah. you two did. I just, just randomly. Just well, you had some idea. good ideas. You had my some good ideas. Idea. I... My only good idea is the calculator. Yes, that's a great, I love that idea. That's a good one. My, I like my idea of bringing, bringing uh, the, so, trying to bring the, the birds of prey together. The one. All right. I came up with one I came up with off the top of my head was the dream sequence. I'm surprised that one went over well. Yeah. No mystery. Well, Blue Dragon Five. It appears he is on the telephone. It does. Yeah, it does. sorry. Overall, uh, sorry, people keep ringing me, so I might have to get get, get off of, uh, off you guys. Popular guy. Okay. Well. Whatever. No, it's just, uh, it's just uh, yeah, I'm getting hounded by telemarketers at the moment. Uh, they keep looking for this person who's ne- never here, uh, it, and it, it no longer lives here. I, I, I talked to someone last night about it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so uh, uh, what, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh, we were talking about Arrow, we, we were talking. I yeah, know we're talking about talking about what? Puppy dogs. <laughs> I was talking about more trick arrows that are really awesome. <laughs> yeah. Smoke bomb uh, arrow. I'm going to keep going forever. I was talking say. about how everyone should forget what I said at the beginning of the episode. Do you mean all the racist stuff? No. Oh, you mean the stuff about... Oh, you mean, you mean your son? Oh, God. Uh, I mean what I said about Pamela. <laughs> oh, you all need to forget that at the beginning of this video. Oh, I don't know what I don't know what I got and what I didn't get. <laughs> oh, but you're her father. <laughs> Who mean, said? Damn, I mean, what? Who said? You know who said? <laughs> who said? Who said? <laughs> I said. But okay, guys. Uh, unless we got anything more to say on Arrow, I think we can a- end it off here. Yeah, All right. That's, uh, pretty much. Stay on the straight and narrow, kids. And the yes. arrow, too. Straight and arrow, yeah. too. And for the last thing, uh, we all want Green Arrow to be in use instead of the hood guy, eventually. Yeah. And here's a here's an awareness for all you guys. Don't use the drug Vertigo. I don't care about any other drugs. Don't be, don't use Vertigo. No, no, no. Don't, don't. If you're going to use drugs, don't use drugs. <laughs> if you're going to use it. The, remember, turn when the arrow is green and only green. <laughs> yeah. Is the arrow. Never so thank you. For, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully, I can get these up as soon as possible. Bye, guys.